It is Thursday afternoon. Uh, we're just heading up to start to do some of the ploughing of the maize ground. We've had a pretty wet morning this morning and we had hoped to get up there earlier this morning but with the rain we kind of held off just to see what it was going to do. Uh, it was raining quite heavy early on this morning and it uh, kind of settled down now and the ground is just starting to dry out a little bit. It's not very much like summer still. Yesterday was a beautiful day but uh, today it's back cold. It's about 8-9 nine degrees, uh, wet obviously and yeah, just not very nice at all. So. Yeah, it's not going to be helping the growth situation very much. But, uh, yeah, I'm in the 6.9.30 and I've got the, the Overham plough on. Mind. Uh, it's 4 for it. So I'll, that's what I'll be using today. And uh, probably tomorrow as well. If it stays dry tomorrow, we'll hopefully, hopefully get a good start made on this this evening and uh, finish it in tomorrow. We've got about 36 acres to do all together and it's it's not a straightforward 36 acres to plough. It's uh, fairly fairly hilly and uh, it's odd shaped as well. A lot of uh, a lot of short ground in it, but we're fairly used to ploughing. This is the fourth year now we've been ploughing it, so kind of used to ploughing it. Uh, Jerry's also going to be up here ploughing. He's got the He's got the 6420 and the, the Cavernland plough, so yeah, very picturesque around this area here. This is this is a, the rear entrance into into the golf course. And uh, yeah, it's lovely. There's there's a river here and a very nice old bridge as well. So we go in and get started and I'll get you set up. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, get you set up and uh, I'll get a little bit of footage then once I get going. Got some wild deer grazing off the golf course. Uh, this is the second field here that the cows will be going out to graze. Uh, there's an electric, electric fence that runs right along it here, and this is a it's part of the field here we're ploughing today. She seems to be on her own. Uh, in a lot of cases, you would have oh, I haven't seen 10, 15 deer here altogether. But uh, she, no, she seems to be on her own today, unless the rest of them are hiding up over some of the far side of these trees. Um, when she see me coming, she'd run off that direction anyway, so... Maybe so. I'll uh, maybe just take a little drive up there and see if there's any more up, up that direction. Yes, yeah, so there she went. She wasn't going to get caught up with the electric fence anyway, she just sprung straight across it and they headed on. She run straight across the field and away for the way for the river where she'd more than likely just jump across the river and uh, over to where the other one says. She seemed to know where she was going anyway. Anyway. So it's a couple of hours later. It's starting to get dark now. And we're making some good headway. Um, I'm over in this section of the field on my own. This part here is actually very wet. Never seen the water lying here before and it is sodden. So it really is time that it was ploughed and give it a little bit, bit of a chance to dry out. As you can see, I'm slowed down. There's quite a bit of wheel slip, but uh, we're just coming out of it now again. Uh, yeah, it's quite hilly, this bit of ground. Um, some fairly bad hills in it. There's not really any straight straight ends or edges on the boundary of it that you can start on. So it just leaves it very awkward to plough. Uh, you're always kind of... You're always working with the boundary and contours of the field. Uh, and it, that kind of dictates what way it's ploughed. So. Um, this is year number four that we're ploughing it, so we've a good idea, good idea of uh, how to plough it. There's kind of a, a plan that you you have to stick to with it, and uh, it works fairly well. You're not going to be looking at too many straight furrows, and that's the only thing. Uh, but yeah, 
plan today is to try and plow about 12 or maybe 14 acres and we should hit that target and uh, say we've got that more or less plowed to, uh, at this stage and uh, we'd like to like to continue on and do another bit we'll walk away for another hour or so here until it gets dark um, Yeah, if we can get a plowed, the, the thing about it is if we can get a plowed now, there's some very good weather coming over on the weekend, or that's what's forecast, and uh, it, should, it should do a lot of drying out. Uh, as I said before, this is going in male silage, so the only thing we have to do with it is to plow it. We don't have to, we don't have to worry about breaking it down or whatever few stones has to be lifted or we don't have to worry about sowing, sowing the seed or anything for the maize so uh, there's a there's another guy gonna gonna do all that end of it and uh, yeah we've we've sold on the crop that's going to be grown in it so uh, the last few years we've had barley in it and uh, it grew phenomenal crops of barley but the weather beat us uh, every year for the last few years. The first year didn't do too bad. Uh, it averaged over three ton per acre for, on, on the spring barley crop, which we were quite happy with. But year number two, it only averaged something around two tons per acre uh, because the rain came and delayed us from getting it cut when we wanted to and also started to beat it down and it, some of it lay down on us so there was some of the crop was lost um, so it aver averaged about two tons per acre and then last year was an absolute disaster it only averaged about a ton and a half an acre and it was <sighs> around june july time i would have classed it as the best crop of the three years because it was just uh, it was sown in good conditions last year, uh, and even though last year was quite wet, it was mild enough early on, and it just happened to grow very well. So, uh, but then in the back end, when it was coming near time for cutting it, it it just the the rain come and it just beat it down into the ground, and we lost the. Lost more than half of what would have been a good crop of barley, so that's kind of why we didn't go for the barley again this year. We we uh, we wanted to plant something else in it other than barley because we weren't going to take the risk again. It's one of the. It's quite hilly here. This part of it, definitely not the steepest hill. Uh, you probably won't see the steepest hills in this until tomorrow. And uh, we'll be planning those in uh, daylight anyway, so yeah, it'll be something different to look out look out for. Now I'm just going to finish up on this piece now. I have to go over to where Jerry is plowing and. Uh, he wants me to give him a bit of a, a help over on that side now. It's getting into a wee bit longer ground. And there's a section of it he wants to try and get finished tonight. So I'll go over there and we'll, we'll do the last hour or so over there. Yeah, I had to abandon that earlier because it was quite wet over where we started. And uh, with the tyres in this tractor, the 6.4 can go places that this year can't in some operations. Because of the wide tyres on this. Uh, yeah, the, once the, the lugs kind of fill up and just sit on top of the ground spinning in the wet so right well we'll head over there and we'll see see how Jerry's getting on and we'll give him a hand with his bit